Some of you might remember a video of mine which was basically looking at creating a stereo width enhancement rack inside Ableton Live. And so I wanted to take a look at the project again. I have saw it on my hard disk and uh, I was thinking, yeah, it sounds actually like it's worth uh, doing something with. So I'm going to develop the track further, but I wanted to focus on this pad because I think it's quite a key ingredient on it. And I know that there have been some questions about it. So it's this pad here. Uh, I've called it twisted pad now. There's a couple of uh, kind of interesting ingredients that are making it sound like it does and so I want to draw your attention to that over the course of the video but I've also got it set up with the Live 9 template on the machine and um, this is working really nicely so I'm just going to trigger it from here I've got two scenes I'll show you here on the right hand side I've got Vibe 1, Vibe 2 Vibe 1 is kind of like the intro section and it switches over at certain points to Vibe 2 so I'll shut up for the moment and I'm just going to get this triggering have a listen So coming up, I'm going to switch over to the next scene and then back. And the pad, I've got some controls. So just a low pass filter. And now we're going to twist it up a bit. that and then down so what's happening is is that um, it's got some of this stuff you know I've, I've written a blog piece about my concept of pitch and stuff and now I want to twist it up a bit so I've introduced a bit of that into here and um, let's take a look at the rack itself then I'm going to solo this so we can hear it on its own let's play that on its own there is a high pass on here by the way as well. So you can see the controls have got mapped, low pass. Actually, I'll tell you what I want to do. Let me just show you the wave switch. This is just mapped over here. You can see the shape. So that's a sine wave. So it's almost like it instantly filters everything down. Gives us a real kind of nice warm pad. And I was playing around with that. Look, we can go. So it's uh, an interesting one. And then saw. So it adds a real extra vibe to it. Just love the idea that you can switch those seamlessly um, as part of the performance. Now actually, I couldn't map that to a rotary control on the machine. It actually feels, um, it was it was basically saying that I had to do it to a pitch bin wheel. I haven't got my keyboard set up with a pitch bin wheel, so I can't actually do that on this video. But uh, that would be the solution. So for that particular parameter, the, the shape, you need to put it onto a pitch wheel. So I didn't realize there's a limitation there anyway, so that's that's not really a problem at all. So look, um, what else have I got mapped on? So pitch twist is mapped to detune. So let me show you again, right? Look, if I rotate this, it's actually set to a small amount on the detune. I didn't want it to go to like a really large amount. I want it to be really subtle. So look, let's play that again. And I'm gonna do the pitch. I'm gonna take it up. And that's a little bit too much in the mix, but I just love the idea of just freaking around with the pitch a little bit. And I can go the other way down. So we're not going like a full semitone. That's a maximum 50 cents. You know, a cent is a hundredth of a semitone. So that's something that I will put into the performance of structure to create some variation. Um, so anyway, that's that. And in order to do that, I went to the mapping and um, you, know, you can see here that we've got the ability to set these up. These are mapped over to the macro controls. But also what I did was to, um, let me just open this up. And if we go to the map, so we can see it properly here we go I did a limitation so you can see here the pitch twist range so that's where I defined the amount of sense that it could go to so the minimum and the maximum amount so 0.5 so half a semitone there so 0.50 well 50 as I said 50 cents and um, that's working nicely I didn't put any restrictions on the others at all here uh, but you can do this is where you do it all right so you click on map and you can adjust the minimum and maximum values of the parameter that you've assigned so that's a really nice one if you've seen any of my ableton videos before you would have seen that in action um, so 
that's uh, one of the key things about it. So filtering, you know, nothing new here. This is mapped onto an auto filter. And then I've also got the high pass filter here as well. So the two can work together. There's a bit of reverb there. And uh, also, um, oh, now when I say reverb, that's what it's saying there, but I've got it set up um, with a parameter for the phaser. So this is like a really nice uh, phaser. The Korg effects, you know, you've seen me using these before. This is part of that Korg Legacy digital bundle. And, um, you know, this is like a really nice uh, selection of effects. So I really like how this sounds. So that's on there. I'll show you what it sounds like without. So that's what it was before. And then with it on, it's got a nice spatial movement on there. Um, so yeah, that's what's doing that. And I'll come back to this uh, analog here because this is a really simple patch. You can see there's no filter on here. The amp envelope is just straight up. Um, so sustain level to maximum and a relatively short release here, 160. And um, what else we got going on here? Let me come over to pitch. And you can see here that something is going on. No, there's not, there's no change on there. It's been a little while since I've looked at this in all honesty. These are the, the real keys to this. This is what I remember now. So um, these parameters here, the vibrato, the unison, and also the glide. All right, so look, let me take these off and you're gonna see this can sound rather different. So it feels quite static. I'm gonna put the vibrato on. What I'm gonna do, exaggerate that. All right, it's too much of course. This is like an LFO to pitch. So I had that quite low, but it had this real nice kind of mysterious movement to the sound. Right, the unison. Let's start again. This is adding that real thick richness to the sound that's tied in with the parameter over here. You can see two voices. And then the real key to it is a glide. So this is the bending of the notes. Here we go. So that's a real nice vibe. And of course, can you hear the side chain? And we've got this in this new Live 9 compressor which shows you the visual kick punching the, the volume there. It's working nice limited just to kind of even out the signal as well and the reason for that is because of the the waveform shape changing really though it might be a good idea if i stick that post filters because they're going to influence the volume as well just going to see how that sounds going to switch those waves just going to check the behavior okay so you can see it's hitting into the ceiling of the limiter every now and again and then when we switch to the waveform, it's not touching it. So it's just controlling it just a little bit. EQ just dipping out the bottom end, rolled off some of the very, very high frequencies as well. And then back in. And I'll switch up. And then back down again. So anyway, that's it. Um, just wanted to give you a little bit of a, a behind the scenes look at that. And um, you, know, you can see how you know, you don't have to necessarily have anything complicated on the synth itself. The key elements, of course, were the vibrato unison glide over here, um, you know, the detune map to the rotary control, the sidechain ducking, and um, the phaser, really. You know, that's the key elements to that. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to finishing off that track. I think it's going to work out quite nicely. And uh, if I do have any um, kind of results on the structure related to the pitch twist, what I'll do is I'll do a video about them. <laughs>